The tibialis raise is the most useless exercise that's ever gone viral online. I dare you to disagree after this. Our story begins in 2021. The tibialis anterior is an obscure muscle on the front of the shin that nobody gives a shit about until now. Most important muscle. Where did that come from? Influencers who nobody fact checked until today. Training my tibs makes the calf work more effective, helps posture, got rid of my right side sciatica. I can run like a beast. No back pain, no shoulder pain. That also stabilizes your knee. Bulletproof the knees and the ankles. Here's a list of more benefits. I couldn't find any data to back up any of that. And I looked, as for Huberman, what the f Where are they getting this stuff from? Each other? Ironically, I did find a study that said tibialis muscle. This 80 year old man didn't have a tibialis muscle, proceeded to run 20 marathons without it. As far as I can tell, it's all a bunch of made up bullshit. It doesn't strengthen the patellar tendon or stabilize the knee because it doesn't cross or move the knee joint. If anything, it might help with pain because it doesn't stress the knee at all. It doesn't bulletproof you from shin splints because one, you don't need much tibialis help to run. Two, just look at this. Bulletproof? Do you think this will make you run faster and jump higher? What are we talking about here? I'm not saying tib raises are useless. They're dumb, but here's some actual benefits. One, jack shins look sick. Might want to get closer to failure with heavier load, but chinchillas are worth it. Two, if you're old and scared of tripping, tibialis lifts the foot up when you walk over stuff, so if you don't want to drag it. Three, ankle sprain. Early rehab is usually just movement in every direction. Tib raises cover dorsiflexion. Okay, Aaron, I'll bite. Uh, yeah, the tib raises were a unknown muscle group that was not trained at all until the knees over toes guy brought the exercise to light on social media. And much like everything on social media, it got blown out of proportion. Is it the most important muscle group? Nope. But uh, do we need to swing the pendulum in the other direction and call it useless either? Not likely. But in all seriousness, Huberman, <laughs> WTF, man. Interesting note about the guy who uh, had no tibialis and ran multiple marathons. Well, newsflash, there's people who don't have any limbs at all who have run multiple marathons as well. So I'm not really understanding that argument. It is true, though, that the tibialis does not strengthen the patellar tendon and it does not stabilize the knee directly. That's the key. One argument you could make is that it actually helps with ankle stiffness which can help with dynamic tasks such as running, jumping, jumping off of one foot specifically from a running start, changing direction, etc. Which, under contextual arguments, it's an important thing to note because most of the knees over toes guys following tend to play basketball and play some sort of sport. And just because a muscle may help the knee indirectly doesn't make that muscle any less important. Another concept as it relates to sports is shin angles. Shin angles are extremely important for being athletic. A negative shin angle to help someone stop, a positive shin angle to help accelerate. In both instances, the tibialis, when the foot is in closed chain, meaning the foot is fixated on the ground, the tibialis helps the shin travel forward over top of the foot, or it helps decelerate, slow down the shin moving over top of the foot when someone's trying to stop. Furthermore, are we forgetting one of the main important aspects of training, which is to stress tissues and build capacity in tissues in ranges that aren't achievable in sport? Training muscles builds tissue capacity. It's a second order benefit of training. It has a second order impact, not a direct impact, which sidebar, it's why a lot of things in research are hard to prove from an injury prevention standpoint of any relative significance at all is because it's a second order consequence, not a first order, which makes it hard to control for variables, which makes it very hard to study from a research standpoint, which is why you're never really going to find any statistical significance for any sort of injury prevention for any injury or any muscle. There will be a spectrum where some injuries are more obvious than others, but there's also a variety of other muscle groups out there that have, again, this second order impact to beneficial means. So I agree with you. Calling it bulletproofing is silly, but it is kind of sexy on social media. But it is not bulletproofing. What you're doing is you're creating usable ranges in tissue tolerance and tissue capacity, then allowing the body to self-organize in a manner that is fit for the task at hand. Now, while this peak force uh, muscle grab is sexy, and again, it's research-based, do we really expect the tibialis to have the same amount of force as a calf 
a hamstring or a glute, the size of the muscle is nowhere near the glute and it doesn't have near the length of a tendon as the gastroc. So we never really expected it to have a high amount of force on a peak force contraction compared to all these other muscles. So again, I'm not sure where this argument comes into play again. So just because the peak force is low, it doesn't make a muscle useless. Shin Scillas though, <laughs> that's a funny one, clever. I'll give you that one. But uh, you're also forgetting the first rule of hypertrophy, which is you gotta take a muscle to failure for it to grow. Have you ever tried 30 of these standing tib raises in a row? It's not easy. It's gonna take a lot of people to failure. Also, when's the last time you did 15 to 30 reps of uh, another exercise in the gym? We do this stuff in the gym all the time. Just because it takes 15 to 30 reps to reach failure for somebody doesn't make an exercise useless. Plus, this standing version is very convenient, which makes it very useful when you're trying to uh, give it as an exercise for somebody um, and they don't have much means as far as equipment available to them. Now this concept about old and tripping, 100% agree. I think you shouldn't glance over this fact, actually. I think it's not talked about enough in aging well uh, with the elderly. Now, I have no evidence to back this, just strictly my experience working with people of all ages. But many people who are 50 plus really struggle with this, especially to get their foot up to any sort of amount of dorsiflexion off the ground. I personally think this muscle atrophies way quicker than any other muscle group as we age, probably because it's not trained really at all. And no, walking does not count as training the tibialis because you never walk through a full range of motion and dorsiflexion. So again, let's not diminish the importance and usefulness of this exercise. Another anecdotal experience, um, both me personally and working with some other people, it's actually helped a lot of people with anterior compartment syndrome, which I might make a post specifically about that. So if you're interested in hearing more about that, comment down below. But the short of that story is I think where the most beneficial portion of the tib raise exercise is when you weight the foot with the dumbbell or a kettlebell or using an implement or the tib bar guy machinery equipment, you weight the foot and allow the, the tibialis to be loaded at its end range in plantar flexion, so loaded in a stretched position. For much of the same reason why a loaded calf raise off the edge of a step where you take the Achilles through a stretch position and you load it eccentrically in that stretch position is more useful many times than loading a calf raise on flat ground. There are exceptions to that rule with any, but in general, most of the time a loaded stretch position for an exercise is very valuable from an injury reduction uh, standpoint or injury reduction considerations. Again, one of the main purposes of training is to take the body through larger ranges of motion than it would experience, so it has more usefulness, more capacity to tolerate load through a larger range of motion, through a larger surface area, to then let the body self-organize in uh, a way that it sees fit depending on the task at hand. So, with all that said, please everyone, continue on with your tib raises.